Okay, this I'm really glad to would be a phrase to sound a little bit more pleased. Y para ser un poco más amables, ¿no? Cuando, cuando respondemos algo. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, what about responding to suggestions? What can you say? I'll give it a try. Okay, I'll give it a try. That's a great idea. Thank you. That's a great idea. That's a good idea. Yes, that's a good idea. What else can you, time's over guys. So, um, some of the phrases that we're missing, um, you know, instead of that's the, that's the, that's a good idea, we can also use that's the worst idea. Okay, that's the worst idea. Esa es la peor idea, no? That could be another, another phrase we can use in order to, Response to suggestions. Cuando queremos responder sugerencias. So, um, you did a great job. Don't forget that in some phrases, such as, for example, let me write it on the board. In phrases such as, uh, how about, in what about, the next verb, it's going to be with okay and when you are using phrases such as let's the next verb it's going to be in infinitive so don't forget this because it's going to help you when you are writing or maybe using these phrases and now we can start with today's lesson. So today we're ending unit number two, and we're going to talk a little bit about changes, about changes, guys. So can you tell me what would you like to change in your life? Think about that question. What would you like to change in your life? Maybe, uh, would you like to change your job or you, would you like to change your, your class? Would you like to live in another place? What changes would you like to make in your life? Okay, let me write on the board the questions. What changes would you like to do in your life? So think about these questions, guys. You will have a few minutes, like two or three minutes to think about the answer of this question. You're going to do it individual because this is a personal question. And think about any aspect. You can also uh, say something maybe about your studies, maybe about your work maybe something about exercise or a hobby you would like to change in your life. Uh, think about that. So we're going to make an example, okay? I'm going to give you my personal example. Bane, can you read the question, please? Well, what change would you like to do in your life? Mm -hmm. Well, Bane, um, I was thinking that maybe I would like to do a little bit more of exercise. Um, I will try to go running every morning before or after class. And I will also try to go to the gym because I think I'm 
needed, I need to do more exercise. So your example is going to be like the one I already did. Okay, van a hacer un ejemplo así como el que acabo de hacer yo. Think about something you would like to change in your life. And uh, then you're, I'm going to ask you, okay? So tell me, Asu, what are we going to do now? Now uh, we are going to do one example. Uh, same with uh, you. Mm -hmm. One example like the same I did, no? Como el que hice. Respondiendo a esta pregunta, what changes would you like to do in your life? ¿Qué cambios les gustaría hacer en su vida? Si ¿Sí? piensen, tal vez les gustaría cambiar algo en sus estudios, en su trabajo, uh, en su alimentación, en actividades que hacen a diario. Think about that, guys. How much time do you have for this activity, Steffi? Steffi, which, uh, how much time do we have for this activity? Hello, Steffi, wake up. Bibi, can you tell me how much time do we have for this activity? ¿Cuánto tiempo para esta actividad? Come on, are you uh, asleep, guys? Two and three minutes. Exactly, two to three minutes. Two to three minutes, thank you. So your two minutes or three minutes start now, guys. Start answering this small question. Okay, guys, your two minutes are almost done. Okay, okay. So I'm going to ask some of you for the answer of this question. What changes would you like to do in your life? Can you help me with your answer, please, Leslie? What changes would you like to do in your life? Hi, teacher. Hi, Leslie. Uh, in my opinion, I would like uh, to change in my career, in my uh -huh. in business. Why, did, why would you like to change your career, Leslie? Character. Ah, your character, okay. What, what is about your character that you don't like? What would you like to change about your character? Hey, angry. Okay, you get angry easily. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Leslie. Can you help me with the answer of the same question, please, um, Diana? Yeah, okay, teacher. Um, I would like to change my uh, daily activities for um, to exercise more uh, because I need to exercise. Um, and I would like to change my only class for class for class. Uh, face to face. Mm -hmm. You would like 
to go back to face-to-face -face classes or inside classes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Diana. Uh, let's listen to a guy. Please, Kevin, can you answer the question? What changes would you like to do in your life? Okay, I think that I would like to change in my life is to exercise and add yet we are with healthy food to change my life state of health. Okay, you would like to change your health style, doing more exercise and eating more healthy. Okay, thank you. Uh, what about you, Robert? Is there a, a change you would like to do in your life? Yes, I would like to hang out more with Twitter friends and travel more. Uh -huh. Thank you. Those are excellent and very interesting answers. Thank you, Robert. Help me with the answer for the same question, please. Angie, Angie Gonzalez, what changes would you like to do in your life? Mm, personally, I would like to have a job because I would, with job, I could help my parents to economic. Yes, thank you. So, um, Angie would like to have a job, okay, in her free time, maybe. Thank you. Uh, Carlitos, what changes would you like to do in your life? Uh, I would like to make a change and start exercising and eating healthy. Mm -hmm. Eating and exercising healthier, okay. Paul, what about you? Uh, I would like to take advantage uh, of the three of the free thing I have. Okay, you would like to take advantage of the free time you have. Excellent. Uh, Paola, what changes would you like to do in your life? Okay, I would like to, bore, to be more energetic, uh, to go to the gym every day and to be more organized uh, so I can learn new skills learning to play the piano. Yes. You uh, need to be a little bit more organized with your time, okay? Excellent answer. Uh, Christian, can you help me with the answer for the same question? Yes, teacher. Um, I would like to live in Ibarra to be near to my daughter and see you more often. Okay, you would like to live in Ibarra so you can see your daughter more often. That's a nice que a nice answer. Thank you, Christian. Uh, Grace, can you help me with the answer of this question, please? Okay. In my opinion, I would like to change the sport. In this case, instead of basket, go for a walk in the morning because the day is cold. Mm -hmm. You would like to change uh, the sports you practice, right? Instead of basket, you would like to go walking. Thank you. Uh, let's listen to Alexis. Alexis, what changes would you like to do in your life? Mm, yes, the change that I would like to make in my life would be to change my diet, exercise more, and dedicate my, myself more to studying. Okay. Thank you. So do more exercise and dedicate more to your studies. And the last answer, please help me, Janet. What changes would you like to do in your life? Okay, teacher. Um, I would you like to change in the daily activity. Uh, for example, in the afternoon, I'm going to the gym. Mm -hmm. to exercise and re relax. Excellent. So you would like to change a little bit of the daily activities you do and add some extra activities. Thank you, Janet. Keep in mind, keep in mind your answers for these questions, guys. A todos, a todos, a todos, no se olviden de la respuesta que escogieron para esta pregunta because we're going to need it later, okay? 
vamos a necesitar esa respuesta para el ejercicio que tenemos luego, ¿sí? el classwork del día de hoy. Necesitamos esta respuesta. What changes would you like to do in your life? So keep in mind your answers. Mantengan todavía por ahí a un ratito anotadito su respuesta. Ok. So, um, now it's time for us to listen to a conversation, guys. We're moving to the last part of this unit. And as you know, usually in the last part, we'll learn a little bit more about uh, writing something or maybe um, listen or speak so about something specifically. Yeah, specifically. So, now it's turn for us to listen. We're going to listen to two friends, T, uh, Tanya and Lynn, talking in a cafe. What two changes is Tanya thinking about? So we're going to listen to two girls uh, talking about the changes they would like to do. Okay, let me share with you the listening. And the sound of my computer, okay? So pay attention to the conversation, guys. Track 1.39. Have you done that presentation yet? Yeah, I did it yesterday. How did it go? Well, you know, the usual thing. I presented my ideas, everyone smiled and thanked me and then said nothing. So they didn't even give their opinion? No but I could see they didn't like the idea. The problem with the company I work for is that they're continuing to use the same ideas and aren't thinking enough about new markets. They're not thinking enough about the phone app market at all. Isn't that why they employed you? That's what I thought. I mean, I've been working there for just over a year now and they haven't said yes to any of my ideas. When they offered me the job, They said things like, oh yes, we're very interested in your creative thinking and your problem-solving skills. But do they really want to use them? I get the feeling they don't. That must be very disappointing. I think I've more or less decided. I'm going to look for a new job. Really? Yeah, it's getting hard to keep having a positive attitude. I can understand that. And I thought your app idea was a really good one. Thanks. So what do you think about Hong Kong? Hong Kong? Why there? Well, I'm thinking about making a big change. What? Going to live in Hong Kong? Yeah, well, you decided to come and live here. Maybe I can do the opposite. Wow, that's a very big change. I want to travel more, and I'm really interested in Chinese culture. I'd love to find out more about it. Well, yes, everyone says there are plenty of IT jobs in Hong Kong. But it's a bit of a crazy city. Well, it could be fun. Okay, guys. So we can, we just listen to these two ladies talking about some huge changes they want to do in their lives. What are the main changes you could listen to in this conversation? Going to live in Hong Kong? Aha, uh -huh. she wants to move to Hong Kong. Imagine that. It's traveling to another place. So the first answer would be, or the first change we have is to live in Hong Kong, right? What other change she wants to do? There's something else she wants to change. Looking for a new job. Exactly, Diana. Thank you. So she wants to look for a new job. She wants to look for a new job and she wants to do it in Hong Kong. So probably she will have to travel abroad. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So uh, we heard the context, right? There are two ladies. They are talking about changes in their lives. And Tanya is mentioning that she probably would like to change her work and maybe go to Hong Kong to live there and look for a job there. Okay, so what's the main point of today's lesson, guys? Guys, today we're going to learn 
a little bit or we're going to remember a little bit about these emails. Vamos a acordarnos un poco sobre cómo escribir emails. Okay. So in the first email, we have some blank spaces. In the blue email, you can see it, right? Tenemos ahí el email en azul. And we're go you are going to help me completing the blank spaces. Okay, tenemos aquí seis espacios en blanco. I'm going to repeat the record so you can help me completing these blank spaces, okay? Les repito el, el audio que ya escuchamos para que ustedes me puedan ayudar a ir completando estos espacios en blanco, okay? So, let's see. Um, maybe a... Let me play it again. Okay, pay attention, guys. Track 1.39. Have you done that presentation yet? Yeah, I did it yesterday. How did it go? Well, you know, the usual thing. I presented my ideas, everyone smiled and thanked me and then said nothing. So they didn't even give their opinion? No, but I could see they didn't like the idea. The problem with the company I work for is that they're continuing to use the same ideas and aren't thinking enough about new markets. They're not thinking enough about the phone app market at all. Isn't that why they employed you? That's what I thought. I mean, I've been working there for just over a year now. Tenemos ahí ya las dos um, frases. ¿Qué tendríamos aquí? I've been... Working. Working, excellent. I've been working for my current company for just over one year. One year. Okay, I have been working for uh, this current company just over one year. One year or a year now, okay? But I'd like to change. Let's keep on listening. I'm good at, vamos a ver en qué es buena Tania, okay? Listen carefully, guys. That's what I thought. I mean, I've been working there for just over a year now, and they haven't said yes to any of my ideas. Oops, sorry and then said nothing so they didn't even give their opinion no but i could see they didn't like the idea the problem with the company i work for is that they're continuing to use the same ideas and aren't thinking enough about new markets they're not thinking enough about the phone app market at all isn't that why they employed you that's what i thought i mean i've been working there for just over a year now and they haven't said yes to any of my ideas. When they offered me the job, they said things like, oh yes, we're very interested in your creative thinking and your problem-solving skills, but do they really want to use them? I get the feeling they don't. So, can you remember I am good at... Creative. My ideas. Exactly. Creative or creative thinking. Thinking, yes, thank you. I have an excellent, she mentioned some of her skills. Problem solving. Problem solving. Exactly, problem solving skills. Soy buena resolviendo. Sí, una de mis mejores habilidades es resolviendo problemas. In addition, I have a positive. Vamos a ver. When they offered me the job, they said things like, oh yes, 
We're very interested in your creative thinking and your problem-solving skills. But do they really want to use them? I get the feeling they don't. That must be very disappointing. I think I've more or less decided. I'm going to look for a new job. Really? Yeah. It's getting hard to keep having a positive attitude. I can understand that. So, a positive what? Attitude. Exactly. So, she is tired or... No, here she's saying that she also has a positive attitude. Let me write it there. I don't speak Cantonese, but I'm very interesting. Vamos a ver en qué está interesada. And I thought your app idea was a really good one. Thanks. So what do you think about Hong Kong? Hong Kong? Why there? Well, I'm thinking about making a big change. What? Going to live in Hong Kong? Yeah, well, you decided to come and live here. Maybe I can do the opposite. Wow, that's a very big change. I want to travel more, and I'm really interested in Chinese culture. I'd love to find out more about it. Well, yes. Everyone says there are plenty of IT jobs in Hong Kong, but it's a bit of a crazy city. Well, it could be fun. So, I don't speak Cantonese, but I'm very interested in... Chinese. Chinese. Exactly, in Chinese culture. Okay, so I'm very interested in Chinese culture and I would love the, the opportunity to live and work there. I'd be interested in any information you can send. Okay, so now that we have uh, this email fully uh, filled, I think we can reread it. So I'm going to ask... To one of you to help me reading the blue email, okay? Uh, can you do that for me, please? Wendy, can you read the full email, please? Yes, teacher. Um, dear sir, madam, I'm ready to inquire about the possibility of work in your company. Uh, I'm application software developer. Uh, I've been working for my current company for just over one year now, but I like to uh, I like a change. I'm good at creative thinking and have excellent problem solving skills. In addition, I also have a posi positive attitude towards my work in college. Uh, I don't speak Cantonese, but I'm very interested in Chinese culture and I would love the opportunity to live and work there. I'd be, in, I'd be interested in any information you can send me. Please find my CV at the page. You're faithfully, Tanya Samson. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. So here we have an application email. In este email, ustedes pueden ver que está. Tania, ¿qué? ¿Qué está haciendo ella? ¿Cuál es el propósito de esta application email? She applied to work. She is applying for a, a job, ¿ok? She is applying for a job. She is asking for a job. Está pidiendo un trabajo, ¿no? Es un, un mail que tiene una pinta de un mail para pedir trabajo. So, do you know what's the meaning of this word, maybe? Do you know what's the meaning of inquire? In the room, in the room, in the room. Inquire va a ser una de las palabras que ustedes pueden ocupar de forma mucho más formal cuando estén escribiendo application letters, application mails, or anything in a formal way, you can use the word inquire instead of the word ask. 
¿ok? Es un sinónimo de preguntar. Pero este inquire lo vamos a utilizar cuando ustedes están eh, utilizando un lenguaje mucho más formal, ¿sí? En lugar de ask, podremos utilizar inquire para eh, preguntar, ¿no? I think that's uh, the only new word you can see, right? Me parece que esa es la única palabra nueva o un poco diferente que podrían encontrar en este application email. What is the meaning developer feature? Developer es, se refiere a este software developer, eh, son los desarrolladores o los programadores de software. Sí, a eso se refiere con software developer programadores o desarrolladores de software. Sería una profesión. Any other new word that you can maybe find in the text? Oops. Don't forget that when you are writing a formal email or a formal letter, some of the closings can be yours faithfully, best regards, regards. Sí, esos son los closings o las formas de terminar un email más comunes, ¿no? Yours faithfully, best regards or regards. Okay, guys, you did a great job by completing this part of the email. Now, help me with the next thing. Vamos a ver. Now we have another email. Let's see, here we have the red email. This is a little bit longer. This is un poquito más extenso, este email. But help me, guys, we're going to read this email. And you're going to help me completing the answers, the questions, sorry, we have on the left side. Okay, so you're going to help me answering, has Tanya got good or bad news? When does she hope to see Aline? Okay, let's pay attention to that. Sí, vamos a ver si es que a Tania le dieron buenas o malas noticias. Y cuando ella espera ver nuevamente a su amiga Lynn. Además, vamos también a responder. These questions. So we have seven questions to answer. Tenemos siete preguntas que responder. Las que nos faltarían es. What did Tania do the day after the interview? ¿Qué fue lo que hizo Tania después del día de la entrevista? What kind of ad apps will she create in her new job? ¿Qué tipo de aplicaciones va a crear en su nuevo trabajo? Will she only work on the company's current products? ¿Va a trabajar solo en los productos eh, que actualmente están... Eh, Comercializando la compañía o en qué más va a trabajar, ¿sí? Is the new job well paid? Vamos a averiguar también si es que es un trabajo bien remunerado o no. And what else would she like to do in Hong Kong? ¿Qué más le gustaría hacer a ella en Hong Kong? Ok. So, help me reading this first part, please. I'm going to make... A red chart, okay? So in this email, help me reading the red part, please, Monica. Hi, Lynn. Okay, did you read number one? Yes, you're going to read. Okay, Hong Kong. Hi, hi, Lynn. I'm sorry, I have I haven't been in touch for the past four days, but it has been a very bad, busy time. 
On Monday, I had a job interview with Pay HQ, the ET company in Hong Kong. That I emailed. Then the next day, I had to do a practical test. You want to believe this, but they, they just run to over me the job. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Moni. The, okay. Until that part is okay. Nos quedamos hasta esa parte. Everybody, can you um, watch or see any new word in these two paragraphs? Palabras nuevas en estos dos párrafos. No new words? Okay. Don't forget that this is the uh, past participle of the verb ring, okay? Wrong. Sí, es el pasado participio del verbo llamar. They have just rung to offer me the job. Acaban de llamarme para qué? ¿Qué pasó? To offer me el trabajo. Exacto, para ofrecerle el trabajo. Entonces, la respuesta para la número uno. Has Tanya got, got good or bad news? ¿Qué será? Good or bad news? Good news. Good news. Good, good, news. News. good news because she got the job. Okay. Thank you. So, we have the answer of this first one. She got good news. Excellent. So, let's move to the next part. Vamos a ver qué pasa en el siguiente párrafo. We have a big paragraph right here. And I want to listen to Daniel. Can you help me please with this second paragraph? Sure, teacher. The words sound really interesting. They went to me to work on the looking up. That can be used to make mobile payments. And what's the really exciting is the, also I want to me think of ideas for a new product. Mm -hmm. The job offer is very generous. Apart from giving me a good salary, they are also going to pay me bonus if, if I do well. And they'll pay for the flights and help me with the accommodation when I arrive. Okay, so. The word sounds very, really interesting, right? Um, we can also keep on completing these ones, these, ans these questions. We know the question of number one, right? What did Tanya do the day after the interview? Can you see it on the reading? She did a uh, practical test. Mm -hmm. She did a practical test. Thank you. So she did a practical test. We have the answer for this one. Uh, what about number two? What kind of apps will she create in her new job? Mobile payments. Apps that. Apps that can be used for making. Mobile. For making mobile payments, yes. So she's going to create some uh, payment apps, right? Payment apps. Serían las aplicaciones para poder realizar pagos. Pagos por el celular. Mobile payments, okay? Mobile payment apps. Yes, that will be the apps she will be creating. Uh, will she only work for the company's current products or what is she going to do? No. <laughs> what else is she going to do? No. Uh, she, she will work on new products. Yes, yeah, she will have to think about the idea 
ideas of new products, right? So here we have the other answer. Look at this. She will also think for ideas, of ideas for new products. That would be the answer of number three. Uh, what do you think? Is her new job well paid or not so good? Yes, I, I would salary. Yes, they offer her a good salary. And what else is she going to get? They going to buy a bonus. They will pay her a bonus if she if she does it well, okay? So probably she's going to uh, earn more than the salary. She probably can get a bonus. And also, what are they going to pay? ¿Qué más le van a dar pagando? Also, they pay uh, flights. The flights, okay. And what else? And um, it help with uh, Accommodation. Accommodation. When, mm -hmm. when she arrives. When she arrives. Yes. So, they are going to pay for the flights. Le van a pagar también los vuelos, es decir, el ticket aéreo, ¿no? And the accommodation. Y todo lo que, lo que tenga que ver con su hospedaje, ¿no? Con que ella ya se pueda... Um, Asentar en, en su nueva ciudad. Wow, that's a good job because it's a very well paid job. Uh, let's see, we're going to end with the second, sorry, with the third paragraph. Vamos ya a la última parte, third paragraph. And I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask this time to Santiago Mejia. Can you help me reading, please? Part number three. It's going to be the chip. Yes, can you help me reading the this part, please? But the best thing. Uh, the, um... ¿De dónde dice about the best thing? Uh -huh. Desde aquí, yes. Eh, allá. But the best thing is that I'm going to live in Hong Kong. Eh, besides the food, I am, I am, I'm also looking forward to learning Cantonese. Cantonese. Everyone, everyone at Pai. ¿Cómo se pronuncia eso? HK. At by HK. HK. Uh, speak English, and but I uh, speak English, but I like to be able to talk to local staff, interfere uh, language. I uh, always wanted to learn a second language uh, well. I and I'm sure I be I'll be able to do in it uh, when I'm living living there. We mm -hmm. must uh, get together before I leave, so you can tell me all about Hong Kong. Uh, Would you like to meet up for dinner sometime in the next week? Uh, let me know uh, by that switch to Tania. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Santiago. So, Santiago read the rest of the email. And we're going to see, we're going to find out the final answer. So, we have, what else she would like to do in Hong Kong besides work? What else is Tania planning to do? Learn Cantonese. Learn like a new language? Learn a new language, yes. Planning to learn Cantonese, yes. Okay, 
So now we can answer the second question. What, when is she planning to see her friend Lynn? When are they going to meet again? With your friend? Mm -hmm. With her friend. When is she going to meet her friend? She will like with your friends the next week. Mm -hmm. And what are they going to do next week? Um, she planning. Uh, she will planning uh, to meet for the dinner. Exactly. They are planning to meet up for the dinner next week. So there we have the answers. Thank you, guys. We have the all all the answers we needed. I just want you guys to notice something. In this last email, you have some phrases that are in bold. What are those phrases? ¿Cuáles son las frases en negrito? The phrases in bold. You won't believe this, but. Mm -hmm. You won't. And what? Mm -hmm. And what's really exciting is that okay. in, and finally but the best thing is that. Exactly. So here we have three um three phrases. You won't believe this, but no me vas a creer esto, pero sucedió algo, no? And what's really exciting is that, y lo que es más emocionante sobre esto es que, but the best thing is that, pero lo mejor de todo esto es que, ¿sí? miren, estas tres frases que tienen ustedes aquí, nos van a servir muchísimo cuando nosotros queremos introducir alguna noticia. When you want to talk about something uh, interesting that is happening in your life or any new event in your life or some good news, you can help, uh, you can help yourself by using these phrases when you're writing an email, okay? So, uh, we will be covering this part. Vamos a um, enfocarnos mucho en esta parte que sería el escribir emails, sí, vamos a hacer un email, luego, given some news, sí, informando sobre alguna noticia, algo bueno o no tan bueno que nos haya sucedido, sí. En ese caso nosotros podremos utilizar frases como you won't believe this, but no me vas a creer esto, pero, ¿no? O frases como esto, en eh, what's really exciting is that, y lo más emocionante es que, sí, en or but the best thing is that. Y la mejor, o lo mejor de todo esto es que, sí, estamos comunicando una noticia. Son frases que nos permiten introducir algo importante que está sucediendo, sí. Don't forget about this, guys. Yes. Teacher, disculpe, quería pedirle permiso para desconectar la compu porque se me está yendo el audio desde la anterior vez. Pensaba que era usted, pero ha sido la compu y no le escucho nada, nada, nada. Uh -huh. Desconéctate, reinicia y vuélvete a conectar, no hay problema. Listo, teacher, ahorita. Ok. So, don't forget about these phrases, the rest of you guys. Sí, no se olviden de estas frases, todos los demás. Because we're going to need them. Ya las vamos a necesitar. Vamos a necesitar estas frases. Okay, just let me a second. I will have to erase everything here so we can move to the next page. Mm. Okay, just uh, one more thing. Okay. So don't forget about those phrases. Uh, 
let's see what we have here. Uh, can you remember the phrases we were saying? ¿Cuáles eran esas tres frases que teníamos para um, dar o añadir nueva información? Para dar las noticias cuando estamos haciendo un email. You want to be with us, but what's really exciting is mm -hmm. that. But the best thing is that. Exactly, but the best thing is that. Okay, now that you know and you remember the phrases, tell me which phrase would help us to summarize the news. ¿Cuál de todas esas frases nos permitirá a nosotros como dar un, un resumen de las noticias? What do you think? Which one do you think it's going to help us to summarize the news? ¿Cuál nos ayudará como a dar un resumen? That the best you won't believe is that. Okay, I have two uh, contrasting ideas. One is telling me, uh, but the best thing is that. And what is really exciting is that. What será? To summarize the ideas. To introduce, introduce new information. Mm, no, ¿cuál de las tres frases nos, sir nos serviría a nosotros para summarize? Uh, yes, to introduce new information. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, yes, all those phrases, all those phrases help us to introduce new information. Todas estas frases, las tres que ustedes me estuvieron diciendo, no es que nos permiten tanto uh, dar un resumen de algo nuevo que nos haya pasado o que nos permitan a nosotros decir que estamos ocupados, ¿no? To show she's very busy. Para lo que nos sirven todas esas tres frases es en realidad para introduce a new information, para introducir o explicar o exponer Algo nuevo, ¿no es cierto? Nueva información, alguna noticia, alguna novedad. To introduce new information. So, thank you guys. And now we can move to the next part. Remember that you have your uh, three sentences maybe written down or you have a picture of them. Can you help me to rewrite the phrases Using these words, I will never, ¿cómo ocuparíamos? We have to rewrite the phrases. You will never see. I think of it. Teníamos la, la frase, justo esa frase que estaba en negritas, ¿cómo sería? You, you, you will never believe, believe that. You will never believe that. Mm -hmm. Yes. You will never believe that. What about uh, something fascinating? ¿Qué frase ocuparían como para referirse a algo? And what, and what, what's uh, really exciting, I think it was. Mm -hmm. What's really exciting is. exciting is that 
And the last part, let me see. Over here. The question is that. Can you repeat it's fantastic? But the most fantastic thing is that. Exactly, but the most fantastic. But the most fantastic thing is that. Pero lo mejor de lo mejor, lo más fantástico es que, ¿no es cierto? But the most fantastic is that. So here we have the three phrases we're going to be using in uh, giving news email. The last part, we're going to keep on, uh, we have to, we, we will have to use these phrases, but these phrases are just in the wrong order. Can you help me to put all these words in order to make good sentences? ¿Cómo nos quedaría la primera, una oración correcta y ordenadita? You will ne never believe this. Believe this. But box. But I bought a box. Uh -huh. A house, yeah. I bought a house. You will never believe this, but I bought a house. No me vas a creer esto, pero me. Teacher, está apagado el micro. Sorry. Yes, you will never believe this, but I bought a house, ¿no? No me vas a creer esto, pero me compré una casa. Estamos dando o introduciendo una noticia. Um, let's move to the, the second one. ¿Cómo nos quedaría la segunda? What's even more amazing is the location. Exactly. So, what's even more amazing is the location. Lo que es más uh, impresionante, lo que es mucho mejor, es la ubicación de esta casa. What's even more amazing is the location. And let's move to the third answer. How would it be? ¿Cómo nos quedaría la última frase? But the best, but the thing is that. But the best thing is that. It, it wasn't too expensive. It wasn't too expensive. Perfect. Miren cómo va um, aumentando el grado de la noticia, ¿no? Tenemos, uh, primero introducimos la noticia. You will never believe this, but I bought a house. Y no me vas a creer esto, pero me compré una casa. La segunda parte es como que le subimos un poco el nivel de la intensidad. ¿Por qué? Porque estamos diciendo, what's even more amazing is the location. Lo que es mucho mejor es la ubicación. Y al último, ya como para enfatizar nuevamente que fue una excelente decisión, decimos, but the best thing is that it wasn't too expensive. Pero lo mejor fue que la casa no estuvo cara y no estuvo costosa. But the best thing is that it wasn't too expensive. So don't forget about the use of these three phrases, guys. You're going to need them in just a few minutes. Vamos a necesitar esas frases en unos minutos. Okay. So uh, just let me erase this so we can move to the next part. Okay, guys, here we have some three extra words. Tenemos tres palabras extras que también nos van a permitir a nosotros dar o añadir mayor información. So, can you help me reading, um, please? 
Help me reading uh, the sentence number one. Please help me reading this one. Um, Paola, can you help me reading letter A? I have good. Okay. I have good problem solving skills. Uh, in video edition. Yes. I also have a positive aptitude towards my work. Excellent. So I have good problem solving skills. In addition, I also have a positive attitude towards my work. Thank you. Let's move to a uh, sentence number two or letter B. Can you help me with this one, please? Juanito, can you help me read in this one? Apart from giving me a really good salary, there's also going to pay me a bonus. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So apart from giving me a really good salary, they are going to pay me a bonus. Yes. Santi Cedeño, can you help me with the last one, please? Besides the food. Cedeño, Cedeño, wake up. Yes, teacher. Um, besides the food, uh, I'm also looking for. Yes, so besides food, I'm also looking to learning Cantonese. Thank you, guys. So pay attention to these three words, three words in bold. What do they mean? ¿Qué significan cada una de ellas? What's the meaning of in addition, guys? Además. Además, exacto. Además. Apart from. Aparte de. Aparte de. Aparte de o además de, ¿no es cierto? And besides. What's the meaning of besides? Además, igual. Todos tienen como un, un significado muy parecido, ¿no? Además. Además. Uh, es decir, que nos permiten como tratar de, eh, de añadir información. ¿sí? Añadir información, eh, pero eh, no redundamos al momento de introducir eh, esta información. Porque ocupamos diferentes palabras, in addition, apart from, or besides. Bueno, a pesar de que todas tengan como que un significado muy parecido, ¿no? Además, in addition, or apart from, or besides. Um, pero sí evitamos como que sea muy redundante ocupar como que la misma y la misma palabra cada momento. Help me, guys, completing this part. We can use phrases such as in addition, apart from, and besides when we want to add information. Cuando quieren ustedes añadir información. Sabemos ya que vamos a utilizar cualquiera de estas tres palabras, ¿no? Frases como in addition, apart from, or besides. Ahora, ustedes ya que observaron esas frases, ¿me pueden decir cuándo ocupamos? When do we use them? We use them at the beginning or at the end of the sentence? Beginning. Beginning. Yes, we're going to use them at the beginning. Don't forget that. Siempre, siempre, siempre al inicio estas frases. In addition, apart from, or besides. At the beginning of the phrase or the sentence. We use in addition in more formal or informal writing. What do you think? Formal. formal. Yes, this is a more formal language or a more formal way to write. ¿Sí? In addition, lo vamos a encontrar mucho en cartas un poco más serias o emails mucho más serios, ¿no? Um, 
after apart from or the word besides, how does it go? With an infinitive form or ing form in a noun? ing form or a noun. ING form or a noun, yes. Después de que ustedes ocupen las dos últimas frases como after, apart from, sorry, apart from, and besides, siempre van a utilizar ya sea un sustantivo, a noun, o también pueden ocupar el siguiente verbo con ING, ¿sí? Por eso tenemos apart from given, apart from given me a really good salary, o besides the food. Aquí tenemos con un sustantivo, ¿no? Besides the food. Pay attention to that, guys. And finally, the last rule we have here. In the other part of the sentence, we can use and or also to emphasize that we are adding some information. ¿Cuál de estas dos palabras nos sirve como para añadir también información? And or also. Also. Also, yes, because we're saying también, ¿no es cierto? Also. Este also eh, nos permite también dentro de las oraciones, ¿sí? O de un párrafo, ir añadiendo un poco más de información. Ah, y me van a pagar muy bien, ¿no? Apart from giving me a good salary, they are also going to pay me a bonus. Y ellos también me van a pagar un bono. Estamos también añadiendo información extra. So, yes, guys. Thank you for helping me with the answers. So, up to now, you have six phrases. Tenemos seis frases que podemos utilizar para dar noticias en un email. ¿Cuáles eran esas frases? Can you remember me? You won't believe this, but. Mm -hmm. What else? Thank you. You won't believe this, but. But the best thing is that. But the best thing is that. Excellent. What else? And what's and really what's exciting, really exciting is that? Thank you, Diane and Grace. But what's really, uh, the most exciting or what's the most... Uh, let me... I don't, I don't remember. Uh, but what's the best... But the best thing is that, yes. But the best thing is that. Thank you. What other phrases do we have? In addition... In addition, thank you. You will never believe that. Yes, you will never believe that. Besides. Besides. Mm -hmm. Apart from. Yes, and apart from. Thank you, guys. So we're going to use these phrases in order to give extra information. Okay, so also don't forget that these phrases uh, in addition, apart from, or besides are also helping us to introduce extra information. So we're going to uh, just make a fast review of a, a phrasal verb that maybe can uh, appear in, in any of your tests. Sí, es muy importante, vamos a recordar un poco, vamos a hacer una pequeña práctica sobre un verbo frasal, un verbo frasal que ocupan ustedes mucho y es uno de los más comunes, que es el verbo look. Sí, recuerden que cuando a look se le acompaña de otro tipo de, de preposiciones, va a cambiar su significado. So, uh, you're going to help me matching these uh, questions with some of the answers, okay? So, for example, let's make number one. Vamos a hacer la número uno. 
what do employers usually work look for? What do employers usually look for? ¿Cuál sería la respuesta? ¿Qué es lo que generalmente buscan los empleadores? Someone who is reliable and hardworking. Okay, thank you, Aldrich. Yes, someone who is reliable and hardworking. Excellent. Alguien que sea confiable y que le guste trabajar, ¿no? Que le guste trabajar. So, would be letter D, the answer of the first one. Thank you. Let's move to the next. Did you see John's office? Did you see John's office? No, we didn't look around the building. Yes, no, we didn't look. Uh, look around sería como buscar. Oh, did you see John's office? Mm. But yes, I think that could be and the answer. Letter F, let's write it here. No. Uh, no la vimos. Estamos buscando. No, no buscamos en el... En el En el edificio, no buscamos la oficina en el edificio, entonces. Thank you, Daniel. Let's move to number three. What does disconnect mean? ¿Qué significa disconnect? I don't know. Look it up online. Exactly. I don't know. Look it up online. Si sí, es el look up, look up, este phrasal verb look up, significa buscar. Cuando ustedes están buscando un documento o información específicamente. Sí, eso significa look up. What about, let me write the answer so it would be letter B. Uh, what about number four? What are you looking at? Letter D, it's an adverse form sale jobs. Okay. What are you looking at? Um, It's an adverb for a sales job. ¿Qué estás mirando, no? ¿Qué estás viendo? What are you looking at? Letter G, okay. So let's see uh, number five. Are you coming to the meeting tomorrow? Letter C. No, I have to look after some customer. Exactly. Um, no, I have to look after some customers. No, no puedo, no. Tengo que ir por unos clientes. Tengo que buscar uh, some customers. Look, to look after. Tengo que cuidar. Bueno, Look after generalmente es como cuidar, pero en este caso sería wait is letter C. Look after would be like ocuparse, ¿no? No sería tanto como cuidar de alguien en este contexto, sino más bien ocuparse de alguien. En este caso de los clientes. No, I have to look after some customers. Tengo que ocuparme de algunos clientes. Number six, how do you feel about your trip to Moscow? Letter H, I'm really looking forward to it. 
Yes, I'm really looking forward to do it or to it. Yes. Estoy esperando ansiosamente, ¿no? Por este viaje. So, letter H. Thank you. Let's move to the next one. What do you think of my new smartwatch? Letter A. It looks good. Can I try it? Yes, it looks good. Can I try it? Se ve muy bien. Puedo probarme, no? It looks good. Can I try it? Thank you. And the last one we have is look out. Didn't you see that bicycle? Would be letter E. No, it came out of nowhere. See? Look out. Este look out sería como um, el, un sinónimo de watch out. Es decir, cuidado, ¿no? Como cuando uno grita, hey, cuidado, ¿no? Hey, look out, or hey, watch out. Y a eso nos referimos con esta frase. So, it's good because you know how to use this, um, this frazzle verb, this frazzle verb look. And you know the meaning of this uh, frazzle verb. So, don't forget that we're going to use um, this uh, frazzle verb in some cases with different meanings, no? Muchas veces tenemos el mismo uh, verbo frazal con contextos o con, eh, se podría decir, un poco de, eh, un concepto un poco diferente. Como en el caso de look after. Look after lo utilizamos para a referirnos a cuidar casi siempre. I'm looking after my sister, por ejemplo. Estoy cuidando a mi hermana. Pero look after también puede tener ese sentido de ocuparse de alguien, ¿no? Uh, I'm looking after some customers or I'm looking after some students. Y me estoy ocupando de algunos estudiantes o de algunos clientes. Y también el caso específico de look up. Look up. Look up no sería lo mismo que look for. Look for casi siempre se refiere a buscar um, algo o a alguien, ¿sí? Pero el este eh, look up siempre es cuando ustedes busquen información, ¿sí? O están como investigando algo. Look up sería para buscar información. Ok, guys. So... What are you going to do now? Remember all the phrases we learn in order to add new information. Sí, nos vamos a acordar de todas las frases, las seis, siete frases que aprendimos para, para añadir información. Can you remember what was the first question I made to you? ¿Cuál fue la primera pregunta que les hice? What changes would you like to make? Mm -hmm. What changes would you like to do in your life, right? ¿Qué les gustaría cambiar en su vida? Some of you answered to these questions that you would like to change uh, what you do every day. Some others wanted to work. Uh, some others wanted to travel. Others wanted to go back, go back to inside classes and so on. Okay, so your assignment, assignment or your classwork for today is the following one. You got it on your screen. Lo tenemos ya en la pantalla. Este es nuestro trabajo del día de hoy. You're going to write an email to your best friend, giving him or her some news about the aspect you wanted to change, okay? ¿Se acuerdan que hablábamos de algo que queríamos cambiar en nuestra vida? Pues de eso le vamos a conversar a nuestro mejor o mejor, mejor amigo o amiga, ¿no? 
So you're going to um, write an email uh, giving your best friend some news about the aspect you want to change in your life. You will have to use the phrase you have learned in order to introduce new information or add new information. So, ¿qué debemos hacer? Escribir un mail a nuestro mejor amigo o amiga comentándole o, o diciéndole qué son los aspectos que nos gustaría cambiar, ¿no? O qué hemos hecho o qué vamos a hacer para cambiar algunos aspectos de nuestra vida. ¿Sí? And don't forget to use the phrases. No se olviden de utilizar las frases, las frases, ¿no? You won't believe this, but no vas a creer esto, pero ayer entré al gimnasio, ¿no? Uh, yesterday I started going to the gym, things like that. How much time do you have for this activity, guys? You will have 20 minutes to complete this activity. Try to write uh, at least from 80 to 100 words. Si sí, traten de escribir de 80 a 100 palabras. No se olviden que el lenguaje en un email, cuando ustedes están conversando con su mejor amigo, ¿cómo será? Formal or informal language? Informal. 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 That's right. So. You can start by saying hi, hello, how you doing? Sí, pueden empezar con saludos de forma informal, ¿no? No es necesario que pongan dear sir, dear madam, no. Si es lenguaje informal, vamos a empezar saludando de forma un poco más en confianza, ¿no? Igual, la forma de terminar un email en confianza. Can you remember how did you close your emails? ¿Cómo terminaban los emails informales? ¿Cómo se despedían en un email informal? ¿Decían yours faithfully, best regards o qué decían? Best wishes. Best wishes, okay. Best wishes. All the best. Best. Thank you. Love. No, con cariño. So here we have some of the closings. Tenemos ahí algunas frases de inicio, como arrancar el mail. Y un par de frases para terminar el mail, no para despedir. No se olviden que en un informal mail ustedes pueden ocupar contracciones de palabras si deben hacerlo, no si quieren hacerlo. So now that you know or that you have reviewed just how to uh, introduce or how to start and how to end an informal email, I think you can start doing this. As I was telling you guys, you're going to have 20 minutes to complete this email. And additional, in addition to this, uh, you will have to upload the PDF um, work or the PDF of this email. Just give me a second, I'm going to send you this, this, documents so you can start working on it, okay? Ya les envío este documento a su grupo de WhatsApp para que puedan seguir trabajando aquí mismo y luego subir este documento como evidencia, okay? So don't forget you have to write from 80 to 100 words. You can do it similar to the one we have on the book. So after sharing this information, I'm going to share with you the screen so you can see the email if, in case you need to, to remember some things, okay? So let me send you the document. En este momento les envío el documento para que tengan una guía. Okay. 
So can you tell me please, Jason, what are we going to do now? Uh, we will to write an email to my, to our best friend mm -hmm. about the change of on of types. Yes, using the phrases, no, using the phrases we learn about adding information. Thank you, Jason. Carlitos, how much time do we have for this activity? Cuánto tiempo? Twenty minutes, teacher. Twenty minutes. That's right. So, uh, let me share with you. Ah, oh, no, you got it, you got it. Ya les envié, no, I don't know if you got it. Les llegó al grupo de WhatsApp el, el archivo? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, guys, I start working on that email, guys. If you have any question, you're free to ask. Now I'm going to create the activity on your students' platform so you can upload the PDF as soon as you end, okay? Apenas ustedes terminen, yo ya en este momento les eh, creo su actividad para que puedan subir el PDF como evidencia, ¿no? De su trabajo. Any question, remember you can ask. Cualquier duda o pregunta, recuerden que pueden hacerla, ¿no? Thank you guys for joining to the Kahoot, Daniel, Santiago, Marlon, Tupac, Brandon, thank you. Thank you, Jason. I have to Santi here also, Carlitos, Daya, thanks. Ah, oh, I'm looking for a job. Set up practical, apply, candidate or application. Come on, come on, it's already time. Yes, the candidate. Remember the words that we were discussing the first class about work or jobs. Si la inexperiencia o la falta de experiencia puede jugar en contra de el candidato que está buscando trabajo, no? The candidate who's looking for a job. Let's continue with the next. Don't forget that you have a limit of time. Tenemos un tiempo cortito para completar. Number two, he gave me the name of one of his devices, contacts, errors, or items in a designer design firm who offered me a job. ¿Qué será? Él me dio un número de sus, el número de sus devices. Contacts, errors, or items. Contacts. Don't forget the number or the name of one of his contacts. Good. Let's continue with the next number three. With the end of my love affair, I lost all the confident, confidently, self-confidence, or type. Hmm. What do you think it is? Teacher, sorry, no me salen a mí las preguntas, solo me salen unos cuadros de colores. Y nada. De igual a mí, teacher, no solo me salen unas figuras y no me sale nada. Uh -huh. Okay, what do you teacher, have to do, guys? That happens because you haven't played. No han jugado antes el Kahoot, entonces. En la pantalla, ustedes deben estar viendo la pantalla que les estoy proyectando ahorita con los resultados. Can you see that? No, no solamente salen los colores con las figuras geométricas, no sale la pregunta. Ni yeah. la y no, la pregunta debe ser porque ustedes están conectados desde su celular, ¿verdad? No, desde la compu, teacher. Teacher. Mm. Yes, tell me. Tiene que ver en el Zoom, teacher. Teacher la tiene pregunta. que ver en el Zoom. Y las la respuestas en el internet. That's the thing, yes. Tienen que ver en la pantalla de Zoom, debe estar proyectándose la pregunta. Así ustedes pueden ver la pregunta y luego ir a los cuadritos de colores y escoger la respuesta. 
Vamos a hacer una más para ver cómo les va. ¿Ok? Uh, cuando terminé con, con mi relación romántica, ¿no? nos dice, I lost all the self confidence Perdí toda mi confianza o toda la confianza que tuve en mí mismo alguna vez. Let's continue with the next. Vayan a la página de Zoom para que puedan ver la pregunta. Number four, the farmer was held. Sí, el, el agricultor eh, was held for the damage done by his animals. Será a uh, responsible, terrible, addictive, or fortunate. Was re held responsible. Sí, el granjero fue hallado o responsable o fue el responsable de el daño realizado a sus animales. Thank you. Responsible. Let's continue with the next. ¿Cómo les fue a los chicos que no les salía a la pregunta? ¿Les salió? Creo que estoy descuadrado con el tiempo y el rato que escogí, eh, ya se acabó el tiempo. Ya no tuvo... Ok. Igual a mí me rechazo ya la respuesta. Ya les voy a decir cuando les falte poquito tiempo, ¿no? Para que se pongan más pilas ahí. Number five. I was going to play the room white, white, but I've been considering a light blue. Estaba pensando en pintar el cuarto de blanco, pero... Uh, ¿Cuál será la opción? But more practical, install, addictive, or recently. Tenemos cinco segundos. Four, three, two, one. Okay, but more recently, I've been considering a light blue. Yes, guys. Pero recientemente he estado considerando mejor pintarlo de celeste, no light blue. Thank you. Time it runs very fast in this game. Sí, hay muy poquito tiempo para completar. Let's continue with number six. Qualifications are important, but experience is always a plus. Y las, las habilidades son importantes, pero responsible, practical, addictive, or confident experience. Five, four, three, two, One, practical experience. That's right, practical experience. Pero la experiencia práctica siempre es algo adicional, no es un plus, una ganancia. Let's see, let's see the next one. Thank you, guys. Number seven. By the time I saw the job advertised as well, I was already late, too late to... Al momento que vi el, el anuncio del empleo. Y era muy tarde para remove, apply, offer, or identify. Tenemos cinco segundos. Three, two, one. Apply. Remember that apply is always um, used when you are applying for a job. Siempre que estén buscando o vayan a aplicar a un trabajo, el verbo correcto será apply, ¿no? Apply. Let's continue with the next, number eight. Gambling. Gambling can be as responsible, fortunate, confident, or addictive as drinking or smoking. Gambling, las apuestas. Seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes, gambling can be as addictive as drinking or smoking, guys. Y las apuestas o los juegos de azar pueden ser tan adictivos como uh, tomar o fumar. Well done, guys. Let's continue with the next. Number nine. She asked me to... A couple of letters. Type, install, contact, apply. What would you choose? Seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, one. Type, yes, that's right. Remember that we were, we were learning the verb type, to type. No, escribir o digitar. She asked me to type a couple of letters. Me pidió que le dé digitando un par de cartas. No, a couple of letters. Thank you. Let's see, now we're moving to the final question, guys. Vamos a la última pregunta. Um, well done, Jason, Wendy, Daniela, uh, Santiago, and Diana. Let's continue with the next the final question. Number 10. The teacher put me organizing the project. Put me in charge of at recently or apply. We have seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one, time's up, in charge of. The teacher put me in charge of organizing the project. La profesora me puso a cargo de organizar el proyecto. Okay, most of you did an excellent job, guys. La mayoría de ustedes un excelente trabajo, chicos. Very good. Let's see this week's podium. Congratulations to Daniela for the third place, also to Wendy. And the first place goes to Jason Novoa, congratulations. Also to Santiago and Diana because you got the fourth and fifth place. Thank you guys for this very, very fast review of some words of unit number two. Thank you. Don't forget to um, take a look at all these words and tenses that we have been learning these last days. Um, also, I'm very proud of you guys because you have, um, you have work on your Cambridge platform, I saw that. And in the students, um, in the students' portfolio, the only classwork that it's missing is the one of Joanna because you had to disconnect and now you just connected. So, Joanna, you have a, a few minutes to complete the classwork. Tienes unos minutos para completar el classwork y subir al portafolio. Thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. El resto ya lo hizo. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank you guys for your work. Well done. Han trabajado muy bien. No se olviden de terminar de completar la unidad 2 en la plataforma de Cambridge. What is going to be your homework for next week, guys? Listen carefully. Su trabajo para la siguiente semana es estudiar. Tal vez algunos de sus compañeros les dijeron, yo ya tengo eh, prueba esta semana, yo ya tuve prueba esta semana, o tengo prueba esta semana. Ustedes van a tener su test, su quiz, el primer quiz del semestre de las unidades 1 eh, y 2 en este caso. Lo van a tener la siguiente semana, el martes vamos a tener nuestro quiz. Estudiar bien la unidad 1 y la unidad 2, chicos. No se olviden también de eh, un día antes, la, no, la noche anterior, revisar que su cámara esté funcionando bien. Porque empezamos a las 7 de la mañana. Todas las cámaras encendidas. ¿sí? Si no, no van a poder dar o les anulo el quiz. Ok, guys. So, Diana, which units do you have to study for next class? Okay, we study the unit number one and two. Mm -hmm. What do you need for next class, um, Brandon? What do you need to, to do next class? With your camera, what are you going to do next class? Anybody? Excuse me, teacher. Uh, 
we have the camera on. Yes, you need to have your camera on. Thank you, Brandon. Yes, you need to turn on your camera. Um, so don't forget that next class you have your quiz and you have to study. And what do you need to do with your uh, Cambridge platform two pack? Unit two. Mm -hmm. You need to complete unit two of your Cambridge platform. Yes, guys. Um, just one more thing. Um, don't forget that you can go to El Monasterio from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. with your uh, printed invoice so you can pick up your books. Todas las personas que tengan la facilidad o puedan hacerlo, no se olviden que pueden retirar su libro de Cambridge el, de forma física en el monasterio de 8 a 4 de la tarde con su factura impresa. Ya sea que vayan a retirar el libro de este semestre o de semestres pasados. Any question, guys? <coughs> 